From 2010 to 2017, I was part of the infamous comedy double act, Down and Bluer, with my friend, Josh Bluer. That's how he came up with the name. Starting off at 15 years old whilst we were both at school, we began by performing stand-up, which eventually developed into our own three-part comedy panel show, Never Mind the Teachers. This undoubtedly was our peak, and I used to walk around the school thinking I was Kevin Hart. A year later, and without our sixth form claim, we decided to carry on at uni, this time focusing on YouTube pranks and sketches. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to analyse a few of the reasons our sketches succeeded and a few of the reasons they didn't. That definitely will be the longer list. Reason one, we had no niche. This, I would argue, is potentially the trickiest thing about building any sort of online brand. Having a niche that's not too narrow, that's gonna limit your ideas and potential audience, but one that's not too broad so that you have no target audience at all. Wanting to do everything at once, we ended up changing our niche about five times over the course of three years. We went from being overly niche, creating elaborate, long-running parodies, to focusing on prank videos which included singing to strangers in a lift, and by our final year, a live sketch comedy show with a centerpiece sketch focusing on the suffragettes. I think it's safe to say, we ended on a low. Anyway, the point is, not only was this really confusing for us, it was also really confusing for our audience. If you wanted prank videos, you would watch a prank comedian. If you wanted sketch videos, you would watch a sketch comedian. And if you wanted one prank set in a library, one sketch about World War One, and a series about parody boy band, you would watch Down and Bluer. As hard as it would have been to sacrifice something, we really should have chosen one area, doubled down on that, and become known for that niche. We actually had one sketch that did quite well. So arrogant now. It had a specific niche, which was University Live, which made it very shareable and relatable. And perhaps this is the niche we should have honed in on for the rest of the year. Reason two, we try to be perfectionists on social media. Looking back at some of our social media posts, this may be very hard to believe, but I remember at the time we used to agonize over minute details. We would worry about whether we should put a video on YouTube and Facebook, or just Facebook, or even just Instagram, and try and build an audience there. And in the end, no one cared. When you are a small video creator, it's very easy to think that people are analysing your videos in great detail. But in reality, they are skimming through the first 30 seconds, at best, and then just getting on with the rest of their day. When you are first starting out, unless you are making one-off masterpieces, quantity is king. Essentially, you want to be giving yourself as many opportunities as possible to go viral. Firing out a sketch a week and putting it on every social media platform available is a much more effective strategy than agonising over one quality video and then posting the link on Facebook on a Friday night whilst everyone you know is at the pub. This is not an effective strategy. Reason three, we didn't have a big enough team. This might sound ridiculous as we were running Down and Bluer, not Warner Brothers, but it is true. The main issue was at the time, we didn't have much of our own equipment, and all the videos we wrote featured myself and Josh, so we always needed at least one extra person to help us out. This was often our long-suffering housemate and honorary Down and Bluer member, Danny, who was frequently dragged from his bed, often literally, to film or occasionally star in a sketch. Traffic with murder. Danny was great and played a really, really big part in helping us. But what we needed was another full-time person, ideally with a good camera and a microphone. Essentially, everything that is crucial for a good YouTube video, we overlooked. From the sound quality, to the lighting, the editing, and the thumbnails. We were so invested in the writing and the jokes, <laughs> that everything else came a distant second. I would argue that some of our sketches were quite funny. So but the production quality did let them down. 
For example, for the classic prank singing to strangers in a lift, This lift is going down, down. We asked our mate Gordon the day before if he was free to film it on his phone. The lift also had a mirrored back, so you can pretty much see Gordon throughout the entire thing. We didn't need to spend thousands and thousands on quality equipment. We just needed to spend something. Reason four, we made videos we didn't want to and didn't make ones we did. This may sound a little bit contradictory in terms of doubling down on your niche, but at the end of the day, you've got to make stuff you enjoy because believe it or not, I was not getting paid for this. There are a lot of social media gurus out there telling you to let the market decide and to jump on what's trending, which can be good advice and can definitely help you get initial views. But I personally don't think it is a very good long-term strategy. We would often try and make videos that we thought people would find funny, which I guess is the point of making comedy videos. But we would often discard some of our wackier ideas and ones we really liked because we didn't think they would get views. We had one idea where we wanted to turn up at the university careers fair as the bakery for eggs and advertise jobs whilst handing out sausage rolls and rolling dough. A ridiculous concept, but one we would have had a lot of fun doing and probably would have done quite well for that reason. Usually our most successful videos were the ones we didn't think would do very well and the big ones we focused on flopped. I think that sort of ties in with perhaps the most important point, which is you have to enjoy what you were doing because that is the only way you will be able to sustain it and keep going. Towards the end, I think we got too caught up in searching for viral success, which made everything more stressful and ultimately held us back from having as much fun as we should have. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, guys. And if you want to check out some of my other videos analysing my smash hit web series, they're all linked below.